So the second part of this airway assessment is when we're looking at, is the airway patent? So is it clear? Is there, is there secretions? Is there vomitus? Is there blood? Is there tissue? Is there food? Is there something now that's, that's including the oropharynx that now we need to find a way to remove? Okay? When we have um, individuals and we need to do this, if they are unresponsive, this is where we need, need to step in and, and kind of take some, some interventions. Somebody that's alert, sitting up, we may be able to position them so now we can give them a basin and we can use kind of gravity to help do that. If there's no C-spine injury, we can get them on their side. Again, use gravity to help if they're actively vomiting or bleeding, we can use that you know, gravity to help clear that airway. When we need to start adding some of our suctioning devices, so what we'll kind of first do is we'll call it and talk about these pieces so you can kind of take a look at it. We'll show you how to assemble them. And then again, this is stuff in you know lab that you guys are playing around with and this is the equipment that we're using. So we'll talk about kind of some of our pieces so we can see them a little more close up. Anytime we're doing airway stuff, always one time use, right? So there's no sharing of this. Once we use it, it gets thrown away. So everything comes packaged, right? So it's, we open it up and it's fresh, we're using that. So you wanna make sure that, you know, especially in the ambulance, where you're putting things. You know, if you take it out of the package and you put it on that bench seat or you put it on the counter, it's no longer, you know, sterile. We never wanna introduce infection into somebody's airway anywhere in the body, but you know, we want to make sure that everything we're using, as best we can, aseptic technique. You're going to use your PPE, make sure that you're protected, eye protection, make sure that you, know, you, you get your gloves on, um, and this is where anytime that you're suctioning, we run the risk of you know, secretions and things starting to kind of fly about. Um, we've definitely had you know, times where we've been doing airway management and the person at the, the foot of the cot, um, you know, at the end of the stretcher, now all of a sudden they're getting hit with secretions as, as these things are coming out. So you always want to make sure you get your PPE. When we come in, we take a look at our equipment, okay? So, we have our rigid Yang Cower plastic suction device. So this is firm rigid plastic. It's got a little thumb port. So when this end attaches to our tubing, we use our thumb, and we'll do a demonstration, we'll show you how this works, to you know, uh, draw the secretions out. It's a small internal diameter, so if we're looking at teeth, particles, food, it isn't going to work. So sometimes if we're able to, we're able to use this to kind of scoop some of that out. We never want to do a blind glove sweep, you know, put our fingers in somebody's mouth, especially if they're unresponsive. But we may be able to, to use this to help get some of the bigger particles out. Thumb will create that vacuum effect and we'll suction. When we suction, no more than 10 to 15 seconds. Ideally, and this is where now we never lose sight of the distal tip, we wanna be able to see this inside the patient's mouth. Um, if we go too far in the back of the nut, that's where we have our, our vagal nerve, so it innervates in the back of the throat. So if we were to stimulate that with a suction device, this is where now we'll cause the patient's heart rate to drop, right? They're gonna braid you down, they're gonna become bradycardic, we're gonna see them become hypotensive, their blood pressure is gonna drop. So these are things that we don't wanna do. You always make sure you're able to see this, once we've inserted it to the depth where we're still able to see it, we apply our thumb, create the vacuum effect, and we suction on the way out, okay? If somebody has you know, a continuous vomitus or, or bleeding, we may have to suction more than that 10 to 15 seconds. But what we're looking at is, you know, we, while we're suctioning, we're depriving them of oxygen. So if we're able to do this 10 to 15 seconds and that clears the airway, then we can kind of continue on. And all of our airway stuff, this is a constant reassessment. If we're managing somebody's airway, we have something dedicated to it, and that's what we're there doing. Okay, so we talked about our Yang Cower. So then we have our soft tip or a whistle tip, also known as our, our fringe. So this is where now these they're they're flexible, they're bendy. So if we have individuals who um, you know have a stoma, a surgical opening, if they have some type of uh, you know tube inserted, a supraglottic or an endotracheal tube. Um, you know, our, our infants and newborns, whistle tip is going to be more gentle for their, you know, very small, delicate, you know, um, oropharynx. So these uh, come in different sizes. So the way I remember them was like men's pant sizes. So you look at like a French 29 is smaller and they're talking about the internal diameter than like a French 20, uh, 32. Uh, so now when we look at that, they're referring to the internal diameter of these. So these just like the Yank Cow are attached to our tubing device. We'll show you how to do that. And then this is our thumb port. Okay. 
So same as we would insert this, we're gonna have a predetermined length. So when we measure this, we're gonna measure the same way as we do our OPAs. We're gonna go from the corner of the mouth to the corner of the ear. We're gonna have a predetermined length and we're not gonna go any further than that. So we wanna make sure. Um, so when we start looking at you know, uh, you know, sizing for this, we're looking at that internal diameter. Um, and you can see when we look at these, that again, um, if we have thick secretions, if we have you know, food particles, this is not going to be um, you know, conducive to getting that out. So these attach to that tubing the same way. If we have our, you know, our infants, our newborns, we also have for suctioning a bulb syringe. So you know, we'll talk more when we do our, our OB section. Um, you know, we no longer uh, immediately suction upon birth, but a lot of times we'll have uh, you know, infants and uh, you know, young kids, remember they're obligate nose breathers, and what happens is they get you know, a nose full of you know, crusties and dried mucus, and now all of a sudden it interferes with their ability to breathe. So a lot of times we may go out and have to kind of demonstrate for you know, new parents how to use the bulk syringe to suction out those secretions and kind of you know, reverse that hypoxia and help this child breathe. So the bulb syringe, you squeeze it, and now you insert, and that's gonna suction, and then we'll discard it, okay? So we'll have a basin. So these are the, the types of devices. When we look at our tubing, like we said, everything comes packaged, so it's aseptic, so you'd open it up. And when we look at our, our tubing, this here, we're looking at um, our portable suction device. So we'll kind of show you how to assemble all this. Portable device we're gonna have in the ambulance that's gonna be charging, and this is anytime we have a patient where we're potentially gonna have to manage their airway, we should take this to the patient's side. So we have this charging in the ambulance, this is portable, we unplug it, and now while it was charging, it's gonna be able to operate at the patient's side. When we get back in the ambulance, we'll switch over to that wall mount, okay? So when we look at this here, we have this tubing, so we would take it out of, and it's, one end is going to attach to our canister, and then the other end, so it's tubing, this is the end that's now going to attach to our determined suction device. So if we're going to attach it to the Yang Hauer, it comes in just on this end, now we have the tube. It's connected to the tubing, which goes into the canister, and now collects you know, the bio waste. Again, thumb port, and we're able to suction on the way out. When we look at our whistle tip, all right, so if we take one, so now we look, this is the end, that port goes in and attaches to our tubing, this is our thumb port. So again, we would have a predetermined length, and now once we've got it inserted to the predetermined depth, thumb port to create that vacuum effect, and we suction on the way out. So if we were using this in an endotracheal tube, we'd kind of go in a, a circular motion, trying to get the secretions off the side of the tube. And then again, this is why you want that PPE, because when this comes out of that device, Anything that's along this that's been in, you know, uh, in contact with those secretions, now all of a sudden those can spray you know, when we have people around. So you know, safety first. When we look at this here, when we put it back on, this here, you know, so this is gonna be measured in the millimeters of mercury. So we want to get it up to 300. So we're gonna see this kind of light up here. So as we turn this on, We can hear the change in the amount of suction that we have, and we can see that it lights up with where we want it. So we put this up to around 350, and now I've got a little basin of water here. What we're going to see is when we apply our suction, it's going to go through the tube and it'll get collected into this canister. So it won't do anything until I cover that thumb board. So now this would be filled with vomit or blood or you know any type of secretions. So this is gonna get disposed of in a biohazard container when we get to the hospital. We carry an extra container, so you know, when we've you know kind of finished or we fill this you know with secretions, sometimes uh, you know when we have patients with facial trauma, they may have continuous you know bleeding that we're suctioning, so we may fill this and now have to switch it to another canister. 
If not, when we get to the hospital, what we're going to do is we're going to take all this airway, right? One time use, it gets discarded. And now in our portable, so I'm going to remove this just so, you know, easy visualization. When we look at our canister, this is where now this goes right out. We're able to remove the canister, disconnect our tube in. This with all the creatures gets discarded in a biohazard waste. And then we put in a clean canister. It goes right back into our, our device and we can see it, it slides right into the, the slots here. We make sure that our tubing, everything's connected and now we're ready to go for the next time. So a lot of times after we use it, we take our clean tubing and we have it stored with the suction device. So now we have everything ready to go for the next time we have a patient who needs it.